In this video, I'm doing a five minute review on this. This is a, a little KNF filter pack which I've been uh, given to try out. So, if you want to find out what they're like and if they're good value for money, keep watching. Roll titles. <music> Hi YouTube, Brian James here with you once again. And those nice people at um, KNF Concept, um, Kent Faith, have sent me through this. Now, this, I'll put it as a, as a supported video. I'll say that they are supporting the channel on this one, but it was not meant as a review example. I was never asked to, to review this. I haven't been asked to give opinion on this, and I've certainly not been asked to say certain words or, or things, positive or negative, so I can say what I like. I was sent these through just as a gift because I've done a few videos for them in the past. And um, Kent Faith I've been really impressed with because you'll seen maybe recently as, as well I did a, an update video on the, um, the, the 254C4 tripod, which is what I've got it on here, my carbon fiber tripod, and also the messenger case that I use a lot. But this is a little pack of um, magnetic filters, a little three pack of filters. They cost around about £60 UK-ish, depending on what size of um, lens you have. And you buy them by the lens size. But let's have a look at it. Neat little pack, little magnetic thing on there. There's a zip, which is very flush, very neat. Very, very neatly finished on there. It's a good little sort of um, woven type case, quite hard wearing very bright orange interior which I rather like actually and inside is a ring now in this case I've asked for 56 mil because I've been using this on both my 12 to 60 Lumix and my 14 to 140 so we have the standard ring which is a screw on ring so I'll just screw that on the front of this is my 14 to 140 on my AM1 Mark 1 neat I can still get the lens cap on top of that as well which I'm really impressed with and it's probably ooh, three or four millimeters at the most probably three millimeters at the most thick. I think I may be even ex exaggerating that, it may be less than that. So it's totally unobstructive, unobstructive, totally unobstructive on the camera. I knew I'd get it right in the end. What else comes in the pack? Well, first thing is something I don't tend to use. I'm not a huge filter user at the best of times. Most filters that we use, that I used to use when I was doing film photography, especially black and white filters, the, they can be reproduced very, very easily on things like Lightroom in post-production. There are a few filters which I do feel can't be reproduced fully. Uh, maybe partial way, but not fully. Uh, one of the ones that I don't tend to use very often is this. This is a UV filter. Now, I used to use UV filters a lot because I used to have them on as protection on the lens. It was a, an oft sort of thought about having protection on the lens. But I never had one break. I never had to deal with that. And I always thought, well, I've got a bit of extra glass in between. Now, on the film days, UV filter really was essential because ultraviolet light would, would make the film come out in a different sort of way. With modern camera sensors, I don't think a UV filter is so necessary. But for those who like UV filters, there's one here. It's great. I've checked out the, uh, the filter itself. I can't see any colour cast on it. And when I've had it on the camera, it just doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever insofar as the optical quality, which is great because you are putting an extra piece of glass in between. So it's nice to know that that's not the case. Have I tested it fully? No, because I just don't use it. But there are two filters which I am using in here. And the first filter that I'm going to use is this one. This is a circular polarizer. This is one of those unique filters which just can't be replicated in post-production. This polarizes the light, it puts the light in the one direction as it's coming through. Light will be higgledy-piggledy, it'll come through in one direction. And this is great. I've got some examples which I'll put up as I'm talking along with this. Where if you want to be able to see through water or take a sheen off the top of water, it's fabulous for that. To take reflections and sheen off windows is great. Quite often with this you'll be able to um, enhance the, uh, the skies and really start to pull a, pull a colour out the sky. Now there are techniques we use in circular polarising filters. You want to be shooting across the light rather than directly into it or directly away from it to get best effect. They do have a small um, f-stop loading on it so you will slow the lens down by a stop or two but that's usually all it actually is. But I find that they're really really good. If you want to try and get some really nice blue sky or separation of clouds or whatever, they're great. Now one problem with this, again I'll stick it on, it's a magnetic stick onto this. Perfect, nice and steady on the front. 
what I do find on this is to be very, very careful. I'm using this on a 14 to 140. So, of course, that's got a full frame equivalent of 28 to 280. Now, at the, at the extended end, when you're going into the short telephoto onwards, you'll find that you've, it's very, very easy to use a circularizing, circularizing polarizer, circular polarizer. The problem comes when you get wide angle lenses, insofar as you've got such a wide field of view, you may, and I think I've got a photo here which will show it in the top corner, you should see that it's slightly deeper blue than the rest of the sky. And what's happening is a circular polarizer is acting on that part of the sky alone, but not the rest. So when using with a wide angle lens, you've got to be very careful to try and make sure that you've got the effect evenly across it. It's very easy to get just a sort of deepening of blue in the corner. I don't know how well it comes out on YouTube, but it's certainly prominent on this. So we've got that. Wonderful. I find it's great. Obviously, circular polarizers have to be able to turn. Usually they come with two elements, so you've got more glass there. This is one element. So of course, you've got that. no mechanism to jam up because this is magnetic. So you're just turning it on its magnetic base. I really like that because I've had CP filters which you put them on and just when you want to get the shot you find that it starts to stick and it's awkward to do. This is nice and easy because it's just magnetic. It comes on and off so easily. Put, let's put that off to one side. The other filter in this is something I rarely use but it's something which I think is a very, very good filter to have in your box because in the rare times when I do use it, the effects can be stunning. And that is this. Now you find it's rather dirty actually. It needs clean. I haven't had a chance to clean this since I've been using it with fingerprints all over it. But this is a 10 times uh, neutral density filter. Now the trouble with neutral densities is they are supposed to be neutral. They're not supposed to put a colour cast on. And I've been trying to play around play with this and see how well I get on and I just can't notice any particular colour cast at all. Now you can pay hundreds for an ND filter just on the filter itself. So to get this whole pack for about 60 or 70 pounds UK I was rather dubious. I was tempted to think to myself because I've had cheap ND filters before which give us on. The whole thing has a purplish cast over and a purplish uh, magenta sort of glue. Horrible. Put this on and again you'll have seen some of the photographs that I've been doing or you'll see them at the end. If you haven't seen them already, you'll see them at the end. But basically, on this, I use these if I want to do things like get that wonderful creamy water effect. Now, I've shot these for effect on this one. I actually find that what I've done is a little bit too intense. When you see the photographs, you'll see what I mean. But it's to show you how effective this is. We've got fabulous sunshine here, so what I did is I put the camera on to a fixed uh, ISO, a fixed ISO of 200. I then got myself metered up and put the aperture on about f11 or f16 so I was really making it difficult to get lots of light through so in other words you'd have to have a longer exposure time and that's going to get a nice creaminess in the uh, the water as well or the clouds or whatever you're doing I've tried doing clouds here but the clouds just don't move here in Cyprus any clouds which sit there sit there for all for hours and sort of saying oh I don't want to get in the way of the sun so it's got it had to be some of the little coves that are down there and I went down there this morning just to shoot the little coves because you'll see from a previous video, all the previous shots I did of this, and I did, of the second time or third time I've done this video, I lost the shots. So I went down there this morning, I uh, took this on the camera, and what I did is I just focused myself up, put on a manual focus, focused on my point, because it's difficult to get a focus through when you've got a 10 stop filter. Let's just put this in front of the lens, and you'll see what 10 stops does to it. So let's put it there. Wow. I Fairly, fairly intense. So this 10 stop filter really makes it difficult to focus. So what I did is I manual focused onto what I was doing, took a shot normally, then I put the um, CP filter on on some of them and took a shot with the CP filter, again with the manual focus so it was in the same focal point. Then I snapped this on front of the CP filter on most of them and took a shot with CP and this on. And obviously the time was much, much faster. But even with that, because it is so bright out here, I was still only getting about 10 or 15 seconds, um, even the F16, with this ND filter on before I got the, my exposure correct. And as I say, if you haven't seen the pictures through this, then I'll be putting them at the end. But what I'll do is I'll put the one um, with no, no filter on, the CP filter, and then the ND filter, and you can see what I mean. Personally, if I was shooting this um, for myself, I probably would have had my f-stop an awful lot faster than that because although it's a 10-stop filter, I would have liked to have a, um, a slightly less exposure time because they're actually too creamy. They're actually too misty sort of looking for me for what I'd normally like. But you have the option to be able to do that yourself. So fantastic. So 
what do I think? Well, put these back in the, the little pocket. And the CP filled in the front. And I'll just undo this magnetic holder from the front of the lens. Don't over tighten these things. If ever you get anything with, with screws on the front filters, please don't over tighten them. People over tighten them far too often and they get all sorts of problems. Just finger tight, just nip it up. Again, case shut, zip it over, magnetic catch on the front, and a lovely little belt hook with the fan, with the wonderful Velcro. Other trades are I believe are available for that one. But yeah, that goes under there. Or you can even pin it on the back. It's such a nice little bit of kit. Available on the Ken Faith site. Now, as I say, this video isn't sponsored by them, although I have put it is that it is supported by them because I got these for free. They sent them through as a present. Um, I didn't ask them for these, actually. They, they got in touch with me and said, would you like some just as a thank you? And I said, yes, as long as I can review them. And they said, of course you can. So I'm really happy with these. I think they're fantastic. As I say, I think the price is good. If you're interested in this or any other Ken Faith product, whether it be the, um, the messenger bag next door or the, um, the tripod or a whole lot of other filters that they do because they've got large format filters for all sorts of camera sizes. I'm using micro four thirds that go down really small, but there are different ones in these. But also you can, they have um, a slide in a filter adapter and kit which really are professional quality stuff so if you're interested in any of those go on the link below there's a link in my description for Ken Faith and what it does it's an affiliated link some things you'll manage to get a discount other things you won't but what it does is it does give a little bit of help back to this channel without you having to pay any extra so if you use that link for anything you buy from Ken Faith I will thank you in advance because you're helping the channel but yes these Ken Faith magnetic filters really impressed with them I think absolutely beautifully made I think the, the whole package is just nice and neat my only drawback obviously if you're using multiple different sizes of lens um, you'd need different sets of these but because I don't use these filters that often I use them when I want to be a bit creative I usually know which lens I'm going to be using for most of those things and as I say the uh, a common size in the Micro Four Thirds is this 56 mil fits on the 14 to 140 and the 12 to 60 Lumix um, but you've got them in all sorts of sizes as well as the big adapters for the slide in um, filters and there are an awful lot more of those filters available check out the Ken Faith site at the link in the description but anyway till the next time keep on taking your camera out keep on taking your filters and playing with them and seeing what sort of effects you can get and have fun with your photography I'm going to go and dry off because I'm sweating bye bye <laughs>